Guess who's back? It's the Rated RR Podcast, back after an extended break. But I can promise you, brand new look, same old goodness. Speaking of goodness, Ziao Raushan in the company of my usual partner in crime, Rish Roshan Rai. Roshan, you doing okay? I'm doing great. Hey, it's all about the uh, quality rather than just the quantity, right? And uh, I'm really excited with the uh, guest that we have on uh, today's uh, ep- or this episode of the chat. Uh, you know, I think it's a really good one to be, uh, to be talking to. Yeah, certainly excited and looking forward to this one. But just very quickly, since we last spoke on September 9th, when we spoke to Luka Lalic, so much mm. has happened in Singapore football. LCS have mm. been dethroned as champions. Albrechts are the reigning champions now. And the Singapore Cup is in full flow. How much have you enjoyed it all, Rosh? Hey, it's been, it's been really enjoyable, right? I'd imagine so for fans of Singapore football out there. The fact that the, you know, the league, yes, it was done and dusted. Uh, it was still pretty exciting going into the last few weeks or so with uh, the race for, for fourth, essentially, uh, between a few sides. And then we have the return of the Singapore Cup, which is always exciting. And uh, you know, we've had some interesting results in the competition, and that's what uh, a cup brings you. So I think it's been good times, and uh, I think we've all enjoyed the return of a cup competition. Yeah, certainly been very, very exciting. On the topic of exciting, you teased it earlier, exciting guests we have lined up. Let's introduce our guest, shall we? Now, he was a highly regarded footballing talent from a young age, but unfortunately, he was blighted by injuries at a very young age as well and almost gave up a career in football for one in aviation. But after overcoming turbulent times, it's safe to say he's flying without wings again. It's none other than Geylang International's Joshua Pereira, who joins us on the call to me, it's been really fascinating, Joshua. You know, seeing you return to uh, the professional ranks, seeing you return to to the SPL, and then earning a place in the Singapore national side as well. Are, are you surprised at how well it's gone? To be honest, coming back the first season after uh, two years hiatus, it's beyond beyond my wildest dreams. I would say, Gilang, my teammates, coach, my coach, uh, really believed in me, gave me the opportunity to play, really prove myself. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for. The opportunity to even play football. Yeah, you talk about the opportunity to play in football, right? You yeah. were on the cusp of leaving the game and here you are now with a national team cap. Let's just talk about the national team cap for a while. What was that experience like playing for your country? I mean, earning your first couple of senior caps for Singapore must have been pretty special. Beyond, every, every young footballer, everybody growing up would dream of playing for the national team one day. And... I had the opportunity to fulfill that dream, to play football for Singapore, to represent them, to be a fighter on the pitch for them. So it's really, really amazing. And uh, to do it uh, with one of uh, my idols growing up, Harris, playing beside me, mm-hmm. all the national players, my, even my friends growing up, Ifan, my schoolmates. So it's, yeah, it's uh, honestly... Something beyond my wildest dreams, I would say. Yeah, Raushan will know exactly what it's like working with one of his idols. Um, <laughs> he, he gets that experience every time we, I, we come. I, I haven't had that experience for two months. It's great to be back with my idol, Rich Russian, right? <laughs> Rush. Yeah, listen, Joshua, I, I I thought it was quite refreshing that we had, you know, a new national uh, team head coach come in in uh, Takuyuki Nishigaya and what I liked about this squad that you were a part of was that you seemed to be trying to open up the talent pool. You seemed to be trying to bring in fresh faces and some players that could come in and, and sort of make an impact and show what they were all about, which is really refreshing to see because we've been through in the past coaches who you know, are quite stubborn with what they have in the squad and they don't really want to give outsiders an opportunity. So it was nice to see you sort of get into the scene and, and get an opportunity there. And from my perspective, it looked like you did really well. You looked comfortable playing at that level. What was it like working with Nishigaya and, and some of the players uh, in, in the setup? For me, he was uh, giving me confidence and telling me, don't worry, do your best. And everyone in the team helps you, you know. You know, it's your first game in the international level. They're helping you, talking to you throughout the game, pushing you to do your best. So it's like, it's... A different stage is a bigger stage, but everybody helps you. I would say mm-hmm. all, if not everyone, helps you during the game. So, yeah, it's a really good environment to be in the Singapore national team. It's mm-hmm. uh, the squad. The squad does push you, does help you, everything. They talk to you, they do everything for you. But 
Yeah. It's... What? What was the what was the message from Nishigaya? Like, did he communicate with you? You know, understanding that this was going to be your debut and things like. Was there were there any words exchanged between yourself and and him? <laughs> I the first game against Vietnam, I wasn't supposed to play. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, as everyone knows, Shadan was uh, ill. So, yeah. I only found out I was going to play. Uh, I was going to start one out uh, during the team meeting. There was like <laughs> two two and a half, three hours max. Uh, before the game so it really came as a shock it came as a surprise I was nervous I was I was not prepared at all <laughs> but of course we we footballers have to you know be mentally prepare anything can happen at any time so hmm. yeah he just said the line up he told me don't worry yeah and then everybody was uh, tapping my back like mm. giving me hyping me up giving me all the advice yeah so they were like passing me water <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so somebody was against Vietnam, so they said, "Oh, you're going to have overtime tonight." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, so, yeah, and that's really fascinating to me because the next question I kind of wanted to to pick up on was, you know, what is your thought process? You know, you didn't expect to play. Suddenly, you're thrown hmm. in the deep end. What are you thinking? Just before you go out, what are you thinking on the pitch? Do you sort of say to yourself, "I'm going to play a few passes"? Easy passes, first of all, try and get into the rhythm of the game, or, or what? What? What is that mentality? What's that thinking like? And then, what were the differences between your SPL playing in the SPL and and then suddenly coming up against this Vietnam side? Okay, first when I saw my name come out, I was like, die! <laughs> <laughs> what a reaction! <laughs> then no lah, but I was actually presently surprised, but. I mean, everybody. If you're given an opportunity to do something, take it, grab it with both hands. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. So, my initial reaction on the pitch, the first one was, okay, first touch, get the first pass right, get the second mm. pass right, then we move on from here. You know, get the first tackle in, like, let them know you're here. Especially this Vietnam team, very technical, the best in Southeast Asia, uh, apart from uh, you know Thailand, yeah, Mali- uh, uh, so. Yeah, you know what I mean? Let them know you're here physically. Mm, right? mm. Communicate with the teammate. Work well with them. It's uh, my first time playing the likes of uh, Harris and everybody. So, But I played with Adam. I played with Shah mm. beside me on my left and right. So we someone communicated well. We did our best. And yeah. So Joshua, you told part. us... You told us Sorry. a lot about what was... You told us a lot about what was going through your mind before the mm. game... During the game, I'm keen to find out what went on after the game because you touched on it there <laughs> overtime against Vietnam. So full time whistle, you go back into the dressing room. What's the reaction there? Like just slump or what's going on? Oh, I we were all worn out. We were all worn out. We just <laughs> had a heavy loss. Everybody is uh, upset, definitely. But hmm. I mean, we all gave our best. Nobody likes to lose. If if there was a choice, we would want to make the perfect pass. We want to make the goal, everything, you know. Mm. So we all we could say that I could hundred percent say that we all gave our best. We fought, but it was just not. We weren't that, we mm. weren't as good as Vietnam. We have to put our hands up and say yes. Uh, Vietnam is a way 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 better team than us right at mm. the moment. But we would like to be there one day, you know. Yeah, of course. Of we even had a, we... we even had a team meeting saying, uh, you know, it's our next game against India. It's Hassan's hundred cap, mm. so we got to go out and fight for him. You know, we had mm. to, we had to play our hearts out for him. Make sure that we don't we don't uh, lose ourselves again, like how we did against Vietnam. And yeah, we and I'm, play. I'm you sure came we away did, with yeah. the draw, right? Yeah, uh, it, we we did, and it was we could have won. I would say. But mm. yeah, a draw I against a higher ranked team. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I feel that it's a all right result, but obviously a win will be much better. Yeah. No, I uh, completely agree with you, Joshua. Now we talked about the highs of the national team. We got to talk about the lows as well. I want to talk about you during national service. Right, there was a point where you were out of the game completely. How difficult was that? How frustrating was that? It was really, really frustrating because uh, I was in the same camp as uh, Daniel Go. 
you know. I heard. He was, yeah, next to me. So, he actually lives, his bunk was next to me and we are, uh, we, my unit was a staying unit. So, I no. checked, I booked in Sunday, I booked out Friday. But, <sighs> to be able to, Daniel Go, he, he's part of the SEA Games squad. So, he was allowed to train for Young Lions. Hmm. So, it was really, really, really uh, frustrating for me because I would love to be in that position. Of course. But I couldn't. So, yeah. It was really tough. But I told myself, just keep going. You know, there's nothing going to... Nobody's going to give you any hands out. You got to work hard yourself. You got to do everything yourself. But, hmm. you know, I I would say I'm fortunate that there were my family, my friends were there with me, you know, during this uh, hard time, un, un, uh, unassured times, you know. Yeah. So, mm. I just kept my head straight, didn't, didn't make much fuss about it, I would say, and uh, yeah, mm. came back to football and just tried my best, I would say. Yeah, but during that, during that spell, how do you sort of keep in touch with the game or did you completely not play any football? No sort of training whatsoever, no sort of playing football for the time that you were doing national service? There was a period of time where uh, during Sunday mornings, uh, I would say, there will be training trainings with uh, Coach Fundy. You know? Ah, okay. So the likes of the, the boys who were in NS but weren't in YL at the time. Like uh, Jordan, Jared Gallagher. Mm. Uh, but there were only a few guys, so we had to train with girls. Yeah, mm. oh. so we would train, but yeah, you know, just to keep just keep touch with the ball, but maybe once or twice only, I would say. And also, it was a bit tough during that time because of COVID, so we yeah. couldn't play any eleven aside games during Sunday. We couldn't play any street uh futsal, I would say, cage, yeah, yeah. futsal, yeah. yeah. So I completely didn't touch the ball for I would say a good two years ah. Uh. Wow. That time. Yeah. At all. Yeah, I would play basketball in camp, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of football because, you know, yeah. the boys, the guys in camp don't really play football. So, they play, yeah. they rather play basketball. So, uh, no choice. I keep fit, you know, run here, run there. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating. I mean, to be fair, you're, you're, the way you're playing now, people can't tell that you didn't touch football for two years. I can assure you. Yeah. That. I just want to talk about your your desktop that you almost considered stepping away from football entirely. I mean, fair play, you tell us you kept your head straight during other short times, but you did consider stepping away from football, yeah, possibly yeah. pursuing a career as a S word. How did yeah. that come about? Because I would say because uh, I would like to travel the world as well, you know, to see different places, uh, you know, experience different things. And when I was in NS, my girlfriend at the time was a stewardess. So she was also flying. And yeah, you know the thought of wanting to travel the world with your partner, but mm. I guess it's football for now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great to be playing football as well. And you, I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a career that could see you traveling as well to play, mm. you know, in, in a different part of the world at some point. Mm. Maybe in continental competition or maybe if you decide to... To go to go overseas as well, right? So it's uh it's uh, it's a pretty good uh, career to have, and it's a yeah, career yeah, choice yeah. that looks like it's turned out pretty well for you so far. <laughs> so should... far, so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joshua, I wanna I wanna also sort of ask you. You know, you mentioned that difficult period in national service and coming back, and Raushan has said that no, it doesn't look like you've missed much football. You know, from the outside, you, you look like you slotted right in brilliantly. Um, how did you then? When you came back to Gela, how did you sort of try and get yourself back into the rhythm of the game? You know, uh, my first game back was against Elbirek. Yeah. I only mm. played 30 minutes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, it was a different, different, like, it was a high shift in momentum. The intensity against Elbirek, everything, I could not keep up with it, I would say. So, yeah. And then, in... Slowly, Coach No fitted me in, let me play uh, 20 minutes against Tampani, and then start against Young Lions, and then from then on, it just all kicked off. But I would have to say, really, my teammates, the likes of uh, Vini, Zuzu, Rio, Saka, the, really, they really helped me throughout my uh, returning back phase. And mm. 
you know, fitness is football fitness is very different from just running, you know. Mm. So you have to keep playing to get the momentum back, yeah. everything like uh yeah. That's what that's what uh that's what the plan was to just play and then slowly by from there we see uh how I got my fitness back. But also yeah. I it, at one point in time Gilang has a very thin squad as you all know. So yeah. I we all really didn't have a choice but to play. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. How- how did how, you mentioned those those names earlier helping you? How exactly did they did they help you to get back into the flow of things? I would say Vini is always there talking to me, encouraging Zuzu as well. You know they had a run of uh, seven games or eight games winning or un, undefeated. Yeah. yeah, they were they too were the what do you call it? Stalwarts. They were spearheading. The Still hitting mm. the team, yeah. 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 Mm. Everything we did was through them. And then they were like defend with us. If you can see the last game against LB Rex, Vinny yeah. sliding in the last the ninetieth <laughs> minute to kill yeah. the ball. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Everybody's uh everybody's a team, I would say. Everybody's a team player. Yeah. That's what I would feel that's what Gilang's uh, biggest uh, fighting point is. Yeah. So so insightful to know about how much the likes of uh, Vincent Bezakor as well as Simeon Zuzu played a part in Geelong's revival, which was remarkable this season. And Joshua, I just have to point one thing, right? The way you remember, I played 30 minutes against Elbrex. I played 20 <laughs> minutes against Tempanese. I came on against... I don't know if you did prep prior to this podcast or you just got very good memory, but that's really good to know. And you touched on it there, the, the thin squad, right, for Geelong. You play in several different positions, several mm. different roles as well. Do you think your versatility almost served as a bonus for you? I would think so because, you know, it gives the coach another option, you know, during the game if something's not going right, it, you can play in defence, you can play in midfield, you can play, I would say, a cross. Goalkeeper? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even that. Even well, that. That, that. Even that. But, you know, it gives the coach a different option, you know, if he wants to fix things during the game, doesn't have to make a substitution or yeah, I would say playing in different positions uh, definitely helped me, you know. And I would say for the Geelong squad, so, you know, guys like Faisal Roslan, hmm. Hazwan, Tajali, they all can play in multiple positions. So it really, yeah. really gives Coach you know, uh, an additional, you know, uh, some, something out of the, you can pull a rabbit out of the hat, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, by the way, that, that point in time where you were playing goal was, uh, was a real <laughs> fascinating moment for me. It was really hilarious. I thought there was almost this dispute between yourself and like Faisal <laughs> as to who would go in goal. Right? Yeah, because they were asking, who you, have you played in goal before? And Faisal actually has played in goal before in the Premier League wow. for Home United at the point. <laughs> time, you know, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so how did you, know, you win the battle to take the gloves after Faisal had that on his CV? <laughs> because I was carrying an injury actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I said, "Well, I re- I cannot go on anymore." So okay. he was like, "Yeah." Then Josh going good. Okay. That, that's okay. how. <laughs> uh, now, Josh, you talk about this versatility. I- I'm sure it's great, and I agree with you that you give your coach a good problem to have, right? In terms of switching things around. But personally, do you have a favorite position, or maybe now you're younger, you're happy to fill a few roles? Maybe when you're older, do you want to zoom in on a certain position? I would say I would love to play centre mid because, you know, I I want to attack, I want to score. So, it's a position that allows you to roam, to roam around, control the game, hold the game, you know, when to attack, when to keep the tempo, when to defend, when to sit back. But for now, I'm really, I'm happy being a, a team player, being able to fill in wherever the coach needs me to be. Mm. Even in goal. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really contented with being a team player right now. On that note, I'm just quickly asking you, Joshua, what are the main differences between playing in defence and playing in midfield? I mean, you ironed out a few that why you prefer to play in midfield, but on the pitch mm. itself, what are some main differences? Wait, 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 Joshua, before you answer, wait, wait, before you answer, I, I, I have this theory that once you play in central midfield, playing in central defence is a piece of cake. Because you see the whole pitch. Now yeah. you play in both positions. Is that accurate? <laughs> it's 
actually quite true because you have more time on the ball. But, you know, playing in midfield, you can, you're allowed to make a mistake or two here and there. But playing mm. in defense, no. You can't, you can't give the ball away. You can't make a mistake. You know? You know what I mean? So, yeah. it's a, uh, you know, it's two different things. But, but, I would say, it's easier once you have uh, pretty much experience playing in midfield already. To play uh, in defense, to slot in defense. Hmm. Is it easy Rush- for you to go between the two? Sorry, Joshua. Is it easy for you to go between the two, Joshua? Uh, what do you mean by easy? Uh, in, in, ter- in terms of position wise, like let's say this week you're going to be playing central defense, next week you're going to be playing central mm-hmm. midfield. Is it relatively, you find it relatively easy to just go, yeah, okay, fine, no problem, I can do it like, comfortably? Like the game against Hong I was I started in uh, center back. I started yeah. as a centre back, mm. but I moved mm. up to uh, midfield in the second half. Yeah. So yeah, I I would say it, the way the team plays, it's you know you know what the coach wants, what the coach what what the team needs. It's if you understand that, then yeah, I I would feel it's easy to rotate between the okay. two. Okay. Sorry, Roshan. What were you gonna ask me? Uh, no, no problem. I just wanted to ask you, Rosh, you were a midfielder in the league back in your day as well. Have you ever played in defence? I just wanted to know that. I felt like I never I, knew this I, about I, you. I wish, I wish I had. I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> might, might have been easier for me, you know. Might have been easier for me to play in central defence. I'm, I'm going to have like the centre-backs union uh, knocking at my door <laughs> saying, you know, uh, give us a bit more respect. <laughs> All right, speaking of respect, Geylang earned plenty of respect this year with their turn in fortunes, with their revival. So let's talk about Geylang. Joshua, you played a big, big part in that revival. It started off poorly, but then you guys went on this crazy run after round 14 or so. Were you almost aware of what was going on in the club in terms of mentality, mindset, when you were coming through towards that turn in fortunes? You know, at a... I was I actually was watching uh, most of their game at the start uh, start of the season and I wouldn't say they would be in the position they are in, they were in yeah. if it not, it's not for like bad luck uh, they mm. really had no luck they were playing good football I would say they were yeah. the football didn't change they just kept believing in themselves you know Vinny Vin, Vincent started finding Zuzu Zuzu started finding Vincent they started clicking that's where it, where it all clicked, yeah, I would say. You know, yeah, and the first win, the duck, they had to break the duck, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. The first win against uh, Tanjo Baga, that was really, really, really important for us. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and of course, you coming back into the side is when it kind of all suddenly flipped around, right? <laughs> no, only me. Sajali as well, you know? Coming alone from Taylor. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. Alright, look, listen, I, wanna, I want you to think about the campaign, right? Then uh, just have a quick Think about you know the, the 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 year that you've had in the SPL and think about you know were there any sort of favorite moments from the season that's just gone? Any games you particularly enjoyed playing in? Any opponents you you liked playing against or you found found challenging? Joshua, you need a bit of time. If you need a bit of time, you can talk a little bit more before you before you answer. <laughs> but if you're ready, just go for it. Okay, my favorite game so far this season was the one against Taylor where we won three uh, one. Mm. You know, everybody was uh telling us, saying that we would get trashed, we would get beaten, <laughs> because they were coming back in a 9-4 against uh, Haugal. Yes. They were coming back from 10-1 against uh, Young, Young Lions. Lions. You know? yeah. Yeah, so they were really sweeping the floor with everybody. And they were, they said that we would be the same, you know. Mm. But, but we believed in ourselves, we kept our cool, we didn't, we didn't lose our minds, we let in the first goal, you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and then we fought back. We we played good football, also. I would say, you know, yeah, defended well, played good football, and yeah, that was one of my favorite games uh, during the season. Yeah, anyway, you you, you heard it here Sorry? first. Geylang International broke the Lion City Sailors. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from then on, it, it it's uh, I would say shocking to see you know the quality they have. But I'm pretty sure they'll they'll pick up from there. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I hope I didn't get into any sort of trouble. I'm just being a little bit cheeky with, uh, with that, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> the, the central defenders, the central defenders union is already after you. Now <laughs> the people I'm in just, blue might be after you as well. I, I'm, I'm yeah. digging, a, I'm digging a deeper hole for myself. I'm digging and digging and digging. <laughs> jo- Joshua, sorry, we're just talking about the moments mm. of the season. I, I just want to throw this in. Your coach Noali had some, let's say, complications with health throughout the season, right? And judging by what you're telling me about the squad, about the club, there seems to be a tightly knit bunch. So, what was the mood like when your coach was going through all of that and, you know, rallying behind him, getting behind him to get him better? You know, when we uh, when we first heard about it, we were all worried. We were all, like, uh, concerned about how his health is because that's the most important thing. Uh, besides football, we all... we When he was sick, we showed our support. We rallied together. You know, we didn't... We didn't. We told him not to worry about the games or what. And like you could see when he wasn't on the pitch beside us, with us. Uh, but mm. he knows that we will give hundred percent, hundred and twenty percent for him on the pitch. So yeah. Besides, uh, I would say that I would say that uh, you know his health is more important than the football game. Everybody's mm. health is more important than the football game. So mm. that's most important that he recovers mm. well and he's he's well now. I would say. He, he's back to he's back to his no Ali best. That's good to hear. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Joshua, you touched on various points of the season. Now we've reached towards the tail end of the mm. football season. The league is over. The cup hasn't exactly gone to plan. What was the mood mm. like based on how the season ended? Fairly on a high for Gelang. Top four finish is aimed and achieved, right? Yeah. Uh, at the start of the season, before I before we came in, before I came in, uh, a top four finish was respectable looking at the clubs like mm. Taylors and LBRX, Haugang, Tampani, Ballester, Tanjo Baga as well. You know, everybody had, had a fight for a uh, top four position. So, mm. yeah, uh, top four, I would say it's a respectable finish, but that's not where we want to be. You know, we, were, we would like to be maybe second, challenging for the title. But yeah, of course, with uh, this team squad we have, I don't think it's possible, but yeah, you know, maybe, maybe with uh, bringing in more players, the management helping us, the players. Yeah, I just want to take the time here to sing the praises of Geelang and uh, the performances that you guys have put in this campaign. And I've been following the league since the the start of the year, obviously, right, and seeing all the matches that you that the team has played and. You're very right to say they were playing good football. The results just weren't uh, coming. Uh, and that was something we mentioned in the past as well. So it, it, it was absolutely fascinating for me to see from the outside how this side, who maybe have only like 14, 13, 14 real first team players, I would say, mm. from my mm. perspective, that the coach can rely on week in, week out, and to still be able to put in that effort. And despite all the struggles that, you, that the side has had to turn it around, and finish in fourth. I think it's a very, very commendable uh, display, very commendable season uh, by, by, by Geelang. And you're, you're, you're right to mention, I mean, if you want to take it a step further, I think there really needs to be some development in, in the overall uh, uh, numbers with, uh, with the squad there. But otherwise, fantastic stuff, man. Yeah, 100% agreed. Uh, moving on to Joshua, back to you and your time in football, right? We touched on it at the top of the show, national service. In my introduction, I mentioned you went through various difficult injuries yeah. when you were younger as well and some quotes I read suggest that you almost wanted to give up at any point was that were you on the cusp of just you know what fuck it enough with football I'm going to give up on it uh, wow, we, there was wow, a... wow we swearing on the show now <laughs> <laughs> wow that's Only news to me one episode. <laughs> that's news to me I didn't know we could do this <laughs> Sorry, so strong. Carry on. You, you, you didn't have to draw so much attention to it, but yes, we yeah. can. Uh, Joshua, sorry, you were saying. <laughs> okay, yeah. But I think the hardest point was coming back to football after NS, you know. During NS, you know, your fitness is not there, everything is not there. But, you know, I also thought of uh, flying. So, mm. I think that was, during NS was the lowest. The injuries and everything, yeah, but... I was young then. I could still recover, you know. And mm. I had the support from my friends, everything. But for NS, you know, you're in camp five days a week. You're alone with your camp mate. So, that, I think that was yeah. one of the hardest periods. 
to go to be able to come back from that. Yeah. Jo- Joshua, you know, you mentioned uh, the, the Young Lions and, uh, you know, playing with them. And that's where you got your, your break in professional football, essentially, right? You've seen a lot of mm-hmm. game time uh, with that and in, in that project. Now, recently, there's been a lot of talk about the long-term future of the Young Lions. They've had a difficult season. They've had a difficult campaign. But you've been on, on that side of the fence. What is, what is your sort of view on, on, this, on this Young Lions team and this Young Lions project? And whether maybe it should be disbanded, whether it should continue? Because to me, it looks like it's still giving players an opportunity to go out and experience a professional game during the national service. Yeah, because I feel people don't know what's going on behind the scenes for Young Lions, you know. Because yeah. uh, people are still start the, the players are still studying, still in NS. You know, they wake up at 5.30 a.m., go for breakfast, yeah. go mm. for a five-kilometer run, <laughs> and then go back, and then they do their exercise. Then after everything, they're not allowed to leave un- the camp until they're done with the exercise, like, you mm. know. So after that, they still have to come and train. You know, it's not easy on these boys who are 22, 21, yeah, so people don't give them credit for that. But on the flip side of that, they they have strong a uh, few performances that stun people the, like uh, Gilang for one they won, Sanjo Baga, and most recently Taylor, you know. Mm. So they are capable of doing like putting that performance up, but they have to do it on a more regular basis. I would say. Yeah. Mm. So people don't people don't understand that they struggle. These boys, it's not easy mm. for them. I've been through that. I've uh, witnessed everything. So yeah, I would I would still say it gives these boys an opportunity to play. If not, they'll be like me la, Yeah. Out of the game. <laughs> two yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. So it's <laughs> it's a uh, the critics are back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, yeah. You, I would, I would still be for YL mm. on on the terms that they on the part where they allow younger boys to play mm. but I would say they like I would say they need a few experienced players to guide them along you know yeah yeah. Mm. 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 that's what I feel yeah, certainly something to consider for the future for the young lions right speaking of considering futures your contract is up at the end yeah. of this year. On that front, what are you weighing up? What are you looking at? What are you thinking about for 2023? <laughs> I I haven't made um I haven't even made my mind up yet, but uh hopefully all goes to plan. Uh. I can't <laughs> say much here, but yeah. Hopefully everything's okay and I'll be playing football again next year. <laughs> so so there is we, a plan. Are we going to uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. I, th- I think the plan was I think the question was never in doubt whether you'll be in football or not certainly I think <laughs> Singapore football would be Pol- at Pol- a loss Pol- if Pol- we were to lose you but <laughs> it's good to know that, that there are plans in place and we'll be seeing mm. plenty of uh, Joshua next season anytime you want to reveal the, the the move or want to talk to us about it you have our numbers <laughs> a bit tough huh <laughs> <laughs> All right, above and beyond, above and beyond next year, above and beyond your next move in football, what does Joshua Pereira have in mind for the future? You talked about it earlier. You wanted to travel the world, perhaps as a steward. Now you're a footballer. Do you want to go beyond Singapore? And some of your maybe, friends are playing abroad. Maybe well. a bit. Of, maybe a bit of sailing on the horizon. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, def- most definitely we like to play abroad one day, you know. Be, uh, follow the footsteps of uh, the Fundy brothers, Ifan and Iksan. Not only that, Safwan as well. And mm. uh, Raihan playing in Malaysia, Thailand. Yeah. No, I'm, I I wouldn't mind even trying the Vietnam League, you know, they're coming up. Yeah. They're, they're stronger, they're getting stronger this, uh, this coming, this past few years, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't mind giving it a shot if the yeah. opportunity comes that's of course you know you get the experience as playing as a foreigner you know you're expected to play and uh, contribute mm. to the team it's no no longer like playing in uh, Singapore you know you can you can be at your 6th and 7th but still get away with it get away 
But as a foreigner playing in a different league, you know, you have to be at 8s and 9s the, the whole yeah. season. Yeah. So <laughs> it's different. And that, and the training intensity in the likes of Thailand, you know, is so much higher than in Singapore. So, yeah, it really helps you improve. Yeah, you see, you see with the likes in now SPL, even in your team, even Gelang, Sakuma, who has been an ever-present, he's played every single game, every yeah. single minute. Tezuka as well. I mean, as a foreign player, because the sports are so limited, you can't afford to yeah. get injured. You can't miss games. You're so crucial to, to the teams. Yeah, yeah. That's why, that, that was what I meant, yeah. So, yeah. That's, why, that is why, that's what would help you, you know. But could you show with... real and... Taka, you know, they played every single minute of the league. Yeah, that's, right. yeah, that's yeah, quite crazy. So, yeah. No, that's I, right, I we've, mean, we've spoken plenty about football. We've spoken plenty about football. I feel like the fans don't know much about Joshua. Well, I haven't been able to unearth anything <laughs> outside of football. Uh, what are your interests? Where does it lie? I know you like a beach party in Sentosa once in a while. But <laughs> what do you do for fun? <laughs> What do I do for fun? Hmm. <laughs> I will get slaughtered if I say it here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can use a cold word if you want to hide it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm okay doing it. I'm a happy-go-lucky person. You know, if there are plans, I will definitely head for plans. You know, chill by the beach. You know, uh, I do other sports as well. You know. This answer but, more KG than this answer is more KG than your answer about the future. And that's that why it's me really intrigued, boy. <laughs> tough, 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 tough. This one, if I say I get hammered, boy. <laughs> get, <laughs> getting, uh, getting hit with the uh, all the tough questions, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but then um, I I would love to have myself a good time. You know, I would say. Okay, I think I think we can leave. Question. I think we can leave it at that. I do, I do have one more question though. You brought up uh, that, that reference to Daniel Goh being your teammate in camp. Mm. So I put out a, a post on Instagram prior to our chat and asked for questions if anybody had for you. And Daniel Goh came in and had a question. He said, does Joshua really consider me a camp mate or just his delivery guy? You want to clarify that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because he always goes out, you know, to train for young lions. So, I will always call him and ask him to buy food for me. Mm. <laughs> buy food back to camp, you know. Because camp food, wow, teruk. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, so, can ele- just can 11B then uh, <laughs> makan what the Daniel gets for you, yeah. is it? <laughs> but he brother, he brother. This guy, Daniel go. He always help me. He okay, always buy food for me. So, he's, he's my delivery guy. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, I hope you're listening in and you have your answer. <laughs> Rosh, if you don't have any more questions, I want no, more man. questions to wrap it up with Josh. No, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Carry on, Rosh. Joshua, final question from the Rated RR Podcast. You're obviously at the start of your career and you want to achieve a plenty of things, right? Say you are 40, relaxed, retired. When you look back on your career, what do you want it to look like for you? Wow. What a tough question. <laughs> I, I would... Honestly, want to see. I would want to see myself having played my best, given my all, for the national team. You know, maybe winning trophies. Yeah, playing on an international level like the likes of a uh, Champions League, AFC Cup. So I would want to have to done it all, played overseas. So yeah, yeah. most definitely want to want to see my career as a. Something as successful, I would say, you know, mm. I wouldn't want to have any regret. So yeah, I had this coach once told me, "Would you want to be the player that say, oh yeah, I could have been there, I could have been that, or would you want someone to say, yes, I've done that, I've done this, I've done that, yeah." Mm. So yeah, mm. that's one thing that really stays with me till this day. Wow, happy-go-lucky guy or not, that's a wonderful way to end this podcast. Such <laughs> words of wisdom and Joshua, on behalf of Roshan and I, I wish you all the best for your career. You're only just getting started. You're going to achieve great things, man. Thank you for making time Thank to speak you. to us. No worries. Thank you, guys, for having me. 
Cheers. Thank you so much. Listeners, do continue to support the channel. We're going to continue giving you the good stuff. The football may be over, but the goodness continues. Do support the channel. We'll see you on the next episode. Yeah.